And um, he was now newly born. He was maybe a year and a half. And we were having a real difficult time in ministry, a little difficult time in life. And um, Curtis was actually going to quit ministry because he said, God, if this is the way it is, I can't do this, and so I'm going to quit. And we didn't know it. That very afternoon, Sharon Predovich calls my husband up and says, Hey, can you come to our church and why don't you speak on Wednesday? And hey, why don't you do a little praise and worship? And then after that, um, her husband, a manly man, took my husband out golfing and they laughed and laughed. So that is Sharon. She hears from Holy Spirit and she's obedient to Holy Spirit. I just want you to know that. So. When, when, you, when you are giving in the offering later today, I want you just to remember how amazing these women are. So I want you to know that. Um, Carol, who is coming in just a minute, just a moment, is also a very precious woman. Um, and her and her husband have been very, 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 very valuable and important in me and Curtis's life in this season of our life. And we know that God has put us together as friends, and so I honor them. And I also would like... Where are my girls? I would like Linda Dunker to stand up. I would like Luann Steele to stand up. I would like Sharon Gonzalez to stand up. I would like Vicki to stand up. And I want my mother in love to stand up. I want you guys to know, if it was not for these women right here, this wouldn't have happened today. They have put in so much time, so much effort, and so much energy. So I want you to be sure throughout the day to tell them thank you. I honor those women. Thank you. Okay, Carol, it's all yours. But you have to let Of the meaning 
The first one is it's like a feeling or kind of like a wish, and um, that you something that you desire will happen. Isn't that the way we usually think about hope? And we think that, um, you know, well, I hope that happens, I wish this happens, and I hope, you know, hope, 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 but there's no substance to it, right? It's just a, a thought that, that, will I be disappointed this time, or will I not be disappointed? And that's pretty much how we thought of hope. The second meaning in the secular, you know, dictionary is a person. Isn't that amazing? A thing that, it, that, or a person that our expectation centers on. And so really today we're talking about a person, Jesus Christ, in us, the whole of glory. And he is the one our expectations um, uh, center on. And just briefly, I, I want to say that how did Jesus, my person, that my hope is in affect my life. And I, my parents were missionaries. And when we sang about the harvest, it makes me cry. I mean, that word harvest, I see that in every page too, right? And my parents uh, were missionaries to Japan. And my mom was pregnant with me um, when they went over in January on a freighter in a rough, rough ocean, and I was born in Japan. And today I have Nene with me, who's from Japan. I met her mom over there, and uh, she's 15 years old, and she's at her house for two weeks, right? Wouldn't you know that God provided Brenda Junko, I didn't know she was coming today. She's from the southern part of Japan, Okinawa, and she speaks Japanese. Oh. And look, in the middle of yeah. uh, Parker's Prayer, <laughs> arranges things. It's just wonderful. I'm so thankful. <laughs> so that's my story. But when I was seven, way up in northern Japan, on the Japan Sea, in Noshiro, they had never seen anyone ever that looked quite like me before. And um, when I was seven, I remember one night I could not go to sleep. I just couldn't go to sleep. And I thought, Man, and it was the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, working in my heart. And it was, I can't go to sleep. If I, if I died tonight, would I really be with Jesus? And I went and found my mom, and I said, would you pray with me? And she did, and things changed. God, Christ in me. Now he was in me, because I invited him to come in me, who was my hope of glory. And so... Um, So, what is hope? Okay, now, this wasn't from the Bible. I mean, <laughs> the idea of it is, but this is what came to me. H-O-P-E, right? His opinion penetrates everything. Wow. That makes hope in us. His opinion, what does he think about this, penetrates everything. And there's an example I have. I have just extremely hopeless about some of the choices my kids made. And I think others of us maybe have not been in that situation. And I didn't even know how to pray for them. So I'm like, Jesus, what are you saying about my kids so I can grab a hold of what your future plan is for my kids? Not how I'm feeling today. And um, he showed me so that I could grab a hold of his hope his opinion over that situation. Now, we have other situations, and some of the things I haven't heard real clearly yet. <laughs> you know, but God, what is your opinion over that situation? And that will penetrate my heart and give hope. Because then we can, because our, our hope is in a person, not a thing, right? And so, one of the examples, I saw each of my kids coming up the driveway of our house. And in the spirit, I see pictures. And, and so, I'll just give you one of the examples, my daughter Joy. Um, I, there's lots of stuff to that story, but the fact that they could have children was a miracle right there. But 
I saw her coming up our driveway with her husband in the pickup with a little baby between them. And I know I'm not the really most you know, right with them in the front, but that's what I saw. It was uh, my daughter's son-in-law coming up the driveway with a baby between them. <laughs> After that, I'm like, okay, that gives me hope, right? Because my hope is in Jesus, not a wish. And so later, you know, she became pregnant. <laughs> Whoa, that's a miracle. During her pregnancy, she fell flat on her stomach trying to chase her dog and um, about five months along, and she felt no life. Uh, she, you know, and she called me, and she's like, Mom, this is what happened, you know. And I'm going, oh, no, you know, that hopeless, hopeless, oh, no. And I immediately remember that picture. His opinion penetrates everything. His opinion penetrated my, you know, you, we all have know that feeling of, you know. Anyway, his opinion penetrated that. And I go, oh, but I saw him drive up the driveway with that baby between them. And she was okay. There were a couple other instances. And so now they come up our driveway with with this beautiful baby I'm so proud about. You know, of course. But, you know, okay. So that is an example of that. Now I'm going to read a little bit out of Luke 11. And, I'm gonna, and I, I love the Passion Bible. And so Luke 11... Uh, 33 through 36. Okay. Where did it go? Okay. This is about the lighting of the light. No one would think of lighting a lamp and then hiding it in the basement where no one would benefit. A lamp belongs to a lamp stand where all who enter may see its light. Amen. The eyes of your spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being. When your heart is open, the light floods in. When your heart is hard and closed, the light cannot penetrate. There's that word penetrate. And darkness takes its place. And this is the verse. Open your heart and consider my words. Watch out that you do not mistake your opinions for revelation light. Mm -hmm. So we don't want my opinion, right? We want his opinion to penetrate everything. If your spirit burns with light fully illuminated with no trace of darkness, you will be a shining lamp reflecting rays of truth by the way you live. And so that is what hope is. It's his opinion. Okay, so if you can just even remember that in the future. Okay, Lord, what is your opinion over this situation? And it will, like, it will be tied up with hope. Okay. You know, it says that there's faith... Hope, love. Well, faith is tied into that too, right? Because right. we're not going by just my feelings, you know, worried. I mean, and we do have feelings where it's that overwhelming stuff. That, that's okay. That's when we need friends, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. what is his opinion on this? Take some time. Get his opinion. It, it sometimes comes just like that. Sometimes it will show up on a page. But he knows you're waiting for his opinion to give you hope. Okay. What it isn't. Okay. And, you know, I don't know, Curtis maybe would kick me out of here. But <laughs> I love the Passion Bible, so we have this Passion Bible and King James, you know, version <coughs> communication. But really, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right after this, and we're not going to read all of it, but if you go home and you read it, right after he talks about his not going by our opinion, but his opinion, and letting the light, then he starts talking to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious people that were all basically their opinion, right? And every single one in here. Luke 11, 42. He calls them you hopeless frauds. Hopeless, without hope. Um, 43, 44, 46, 52. Every one of those in the Passion Bible calls them you hopeless. It's hopeless. It's hopeless. And why why were they hopeless? Um, well, let's, let's just go back a little bit. The Berean Jews in Acts, they were more noble they were they were more right on than 
some of the others because they had an open heart like we read about where the light is in their heart and they studied the scriptures, right? These guys studied the scriptures with a closed heart and the fruit of what they were doing was um, the fruit or the descriptions I, I came up with several descriptions out of here from hopelessness and they had, had a heart of greed so if that's the opposite of hope these are some you know so let's just take the opposite hope can lead to generosity okay they cheated others okay so it said cheating truth honesty all that can be in this cup of hope um, another another one is they wanted to be honored before people that's a huge one and I'm just, just a side note, but I've noticed over the years, over and over, when someone wants to be, have honor before the people they lead, and they're kind of a kingpin, and they, you know, I'm, I'm doing my job, this is how I do my job, okay, that would be hope, cause hopelessness. Yeah. Because their foundation is not the person, right? The opposite is. I am here, or whatever leader, whatever group, whatever you're looking at, I'm here to serve you. How can I carry you, you know, like this, instead of this, it's like this. How can I carry you? How can I help you? How can I serve you? And that foundation is the most solid thing because there's hope in the person of Jesus. Yes. Uh, another one is... Um, Crushing others with burdens that they refuse to carry. That's hopelessness. Okay? But how can I come alongside of you? Then hope is multiplied. Then I'm sharing my cup of hope with, hey, do you want a cup of hope? Yeah. Do you want a cup of hope? Then you share it. Um, honoring past prophets and building monuments and buildings, but refuse to currently enter into the house of knowledge or truth. That is another one. That's what Jesus said. Hopeless. Be hopeless. That's hopeless. But, of course we honor those from the past. Because thank you, Lord, for every single one that wrote. You know, we yeah, honor them. Right. But if it's just something that happened in the past, but I have a heart, a dark heart, for what's happening now, I think that's hopeless versus hope. Okay. Another one is serving our own interests instead of how can I serve others. So those are just some hopeless things. So I'm just going to give you a personal example of how hope works. And this is, uh, this. some of you know this story, but I don't know. His hope was so amazing in the middle of a difficult time that I want to share this story. So it's a story of when my dad passed. Now I say past, and you're going to hear this. <laughs> Why? Okay. Last fall, Joy Poker sent me a text, and she said, Sam passed. Well, I always say when someone dies, pass away, right? And I knew Sam was old, so I thought he passed a driver's test. Driving <laughs> 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 test, right? So he's 90, he was 94 when he passed. <laughs> See, when he passed, right? So we, we're working on our social altar. So it's good I didn't text her and say, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day, I get a text again. Did you get my text? Sam passed. I'm going, he died. <laughs> <laughs> I realized what really happened. Okay, so now this ties into the story. The wicked are crushed by every calamity, but the lovers of God find strength, strong hope, even in the time of death. What are our most hopeless fears, hopeless things? It has to do with death, right? Isn't that almost always? It has to do with dying. So, um, on, on a Thursday, we had some friends from Minneapolis coming to stay at our house. I knew my dad. My dad was, um, had, he was 90, 10 days away from 94 when he passed. 
right? So anyway, um, I knew he was starting to go downhill some, and on a Thursday he went into 24-7 hospital care. But they're like, well, he could last a couple weeks like this, or... Okay, so on Thursday, our friends from Minneapolis came, and she plays an amazing shofar, you know what that is, right? The yes. And she heard what was happening with my dad, and she said, I, I, I'd like to do this for your dad, so I recorded it, okay? And it was the most amazing sound. It was like, um, welcome, all that came to me is welcome home, good and faithful soldier. Not servant, but soldier. He had been a, in the military World War II. Uh, he had looked all he did his whole life, right? And it was like this do, 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 do. You know, and I could see it like they're lining up. He's coming, the soldier's coming home. Man. <laughs> My soldier boy is coming home, right? You know? And that's what I felt. Okay, that was a Thursday. Friday, you know, there well, he's not doing so good, you know. Saturdays are Freedom Fellowship. And Joy and Curtis stay overnight. Our friends were there and they're all saying, If you think you should go, you should go, you know, just yeah, we can take care of it. But I'm like, God, I have to hear from you have to hear from me. So I'm going to read. Um, this is what I was reading at that time. And this is how God led me. And I'm so thankful for his word. Here's what I learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient. Be entwined as one with the Lord. Be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yet keep on waiting for he will never <coughs> Don't lose hope and keep waiting. So I had a word from the Lord, what to do about this, right? You know, I'm like, and so every day, and my, I, bought, I bought a ticket on that Thursday for the following Tuesday, okay? So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I make breakfast while these people have a great time. And I kept hearing in my spirit that, do, 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 you know, it's just amazing. Monday I had a job, Tuesday morning I had a job. I get on the plane to go on Tuesday evening, and it's crazy human error that happens. Like, I'm at the airport, Fargo, the plane comes in, 30 feet away. No one goes to bring the plane up, it, like 30, 45 minutes of sitting there, and I know my connection in Denver is going off the window. And then they finally come, oh, we didn't know the plane landed. So everybody on this plane is late, they're upset, late. Okay, all that's going on when I'm connecting with my brother that was sitting by my dad. He's really gone downhill, Carol. Now his now his breathing stuff or, or changed. And you know, it's like when you're a kid, you're sitting in a car and you want the car to go fast. Or yeah. That's yeah. how I felt like with the airplane, go fast. <laughs> <laughs> and so all that's going on in the natural, but I remember this word, right? Hope. He's a god of hope, and he said, keep waiting. Okay, is he going to be alive or anything or not? And so I go, let me talk to Dad one more time. So I put the phone up and I said, Dad, thank you for telling us about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you that you were a good dad. And I promise we'll take care of Mommy. And I promise our family will complete the destiny that you placed in our hearts because it's hope, right? And I'm on my way, but if you're tired, that's okay. You can go on. Okay, so I'm on the plane. I don't know what to do with myself. I'm late, you know, and I'm sitting on the plane, and I'm going, I have to hear that sound, right? <laughs> Welcome home, good and faithful soldier. So I went in the back bathroom, and it's so little planes where people are sitting. I said, this is the door of the bathroom. There's a person sitting right here, you know, like this far away. I go in the bathroom, and I play that sound. Do, 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 you know, and I go, Dad, this is for you. Oh. At that moment, I saw his face. The most, I have a picture of him holding the grandson I told you about, the, the miracle, you know, and he has a happy face, right? But this face is multiplied joy and happiness. And, uh, the, um, and right after I see his boom, his happiest face ever. He looked about 20 years younger, he did a quick way. And I go, wow, this is important. <laughs> so I look at my phone, and it was 6.30 in Minnesota. 
I come out of the bathroom and the guy that was sitting there, I you guys love him. I, the guy that was sitting there, he's looking like <laughs> I go, man, he thought I tutored. <laughs> anyway, I go sit down. I go, but wow, that was important. I land in Denver. I open my phone, and my brother says, "Yep, Dad passed at 4:30." Well, well, he said passed away because he's from the United States, right? But literally, that's what happened. I'm flying to Seattle. Dad flew to heaven, and we passed. So yeah. now I say pass. My dad passed. Yeah. 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 He passed so his flight test. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, oh yeah, and Bob said, you know, and we were singing his favorite hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. We finished the last chorus of the last verse. When my dad literally passed. Do you know what the second verse of that is? I sung it all my life. Um, perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture. Now, first, on my Isn't that a yes. And that's literally what happened. So, I missed the flight, I ended up sleeping in the airport in San Francisco all night, and for a time to sleep in, and, but I met a friend, and that was the God thing. And so I could have peace and hope. Even in the middle of death. And you did see him. I did. I was the last one to see him. Right, right. And he looked so good. And I you know, to this day, I mean I'm I mean I, I want to go through properly the stages of death and loss and all that. But I seriously have not been sad. I'm just so happy. You know, oh I'm so sorry. Away because they're my brother and friends. And I'm like, oh, really, it's okay, you know. And who knows, I mean, who knows how God will lead me, but I am just so thrilled because he showed up because his opinion penetrated everything. It was just so amazing. That's a beautiful story. Yeah, because he did it, you know. And so one of the places where we get hopeless is regarding death, right? And that is one of the most. Hard. Of course it's hard. You know, now my mom's not doing so good, so I'm like, God, you brought us through Brad's parents, you brought us through, look what you did with Dad, you know. So my hope is in him, and maybe I'll have another kind of story, right? But God showed up for us. Yeah. Another thing is like age. Things show up. There's a hopelessness that come, can come with. I'm getting older. We live in a... We live in a um, kind of retirement. People come back to burn this to this night to retire. And I hear, I just don't like what I hear. You know, I'm just getting old, da 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 You know, I can't do anything, and they're fine, right? They're facing some issues because of time passing, but what's, where's the hope, or is it hopeless? Well, what's his opinion that will penetrate everything regarding age? So, my New Testament story, and we don't even need to open there. I have a New Testament story and an Old Testament story. But in the New Testament, I love the story of Zechariah and Adam and Elizabeth, right? And um, actually, well, we'll just I'll just tell you because I think most of you know this story, but it's in Luke uh, 1, around 5, if you want to find that for Nana, she's never open the Bible before, so it's cool, they can do it in Japanese. But I think most of us know that story. So, first book, New Testament, there were 400 silent years between Malachi and the New Testament. 400 silent years. I have been reading in Daniel, and there are a lot of words regarding that in-between time, but as far as like a download of the word of the Lord to his people is in mass. It is in quiet. So think of what Zechariah and Elizabeth were born into at that time. And it said they were old, they were righteous, they were faithful to God, they served God faithfully, they lived all their life, but they didn't have any children. Right? And that was a real stigma. Sometimes still that heart thing is still alive. 
but you know that that was a whole flood situation regarding age, right? And do you know Elizabeth? Her name means God of the Covenant, and she married Zachariah. That means God keeps His promise. Wow. Wow. Isn't that amazing? All their lives they have lived faithful to God, righteous before Him, serving, you know, and, and but this one thing, there was a hopeless spot in one thing. And I know, well, so then, do you know what the miracle was? They had John, right? Grace and mercy. Do you know that when God of the covenant, um, gets together with, he keeps his promise, we get hope because his opinion penetrated their lives. And Elizabeth, so then, you know, Zachariah, it took him a little bit because he was very much a black and white mind type of guy. And, you know, Gabriel, who stands on the right hand of God, comes and says, you know, you're going you're gonna to have a child with Elizabeth. Remember the story of Abraham? They knew the story of Abraham. Abraham tried it with Agar, Agar and he tried it with Sarah, and it was sure different. And so right away, Zachariah knew that story. You know he knew that story. And he said, you're going to have a child with Elizabeth. How can this be? I don't know. So all those years of hopeless thinking, you know, even regarding old age, as time had passed, he thought hopeless. And so that's the first thing that came out of his mouth is, no, you know, no. And Gabriel, can you imagine Gabriel? Look where he was. I mean, I one day I will fully see where he was. But he stands at the right hand of God who created everything. They're ready to send Jesus, right? It's the time of the all times. And, and he goes, I stand at the right hand of God. This will happen. You know, and you'll just be quiet for a while. But that was a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, so here's Elizabeth. She has, she has a child, and she said, um, Luke one twenty five. See how kind God is to gaze upon me and take away the disgrace of my barrenness. Man, the response when there's hope. His opinion penetrates their life. The response is amazing, amazing realization of the kindness of the Lord. And, you know, when we start getting these glimpses of how kind He is and how amazing He is, that hopelessness turns into hope and it starts touching other areas of our life. I'm so thankful. Um, one more example, then I'm done. The Old Testament thing. That's in the, from the book of Ruth. I love the story of Ruth. And I always loved studying it from Ruth's perspective. Right? Right. You know, what a, what a lady. You know, what, what she went through and how she walked and how God blessed her in her life from desperate times to amazing times, but this last time I read it, I read it more from Naomi's perspective. Okay? Remember Naomi? I, she was from Bethlehem. She and her husband were from Bethlehem. And a famine came. And so, they're, they're, I know when she got married, you know, we're going to live here, we're going to our neighbors, look at they have a party for me, you know, the whole normal thing in life. When you're looking ahead, to your family, marriage, family, children, okay? But the first hopeless situation that came was famine. Oh no, our farm went downhill again. Oh no. You know, all, all the things we would go through would be like bankruptcy, can't pay our bill, lost my job, hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. And well, you know, on the other side over there in that country of, of Moab, you know, it, the, the rain is falling there. Caravan came through, they heard the story. I think we better go. So they're like, goodbye, everybody. And and they go there. They have two boys and two about Lisa and the children here. And talk about loss in her life. That's another hopeless of loss. You had this, but you lost it. You had this, but you lost it. You 
have this, but you lost it. I have a friend, but they're not my friend anymore. All of this, all of this, all of this. But what's his opinion on all of this, right? And so, you know, they go to this country. Um, her son's married to Moabite women. One is Ruth, and one is Orpha. Orpha means to turn the neck. And what did she do? She turned her head and went back home, right? Ruth means friend. She stayed an amazing friend to her mother, right? As things got more hopeless, first Naomi's husband dies. Right there is the mother, right? Then one son dies. Then the second one son dies. They're all gone, you know? And so she, she heard, I think another caravan came through. You know what? They're starting to have food again back in her hometown. I'm sure she asked what's happening in, in Bethlehem, what's happening over there. Well, you know, so God has visited his people. That's what they said, God visited his people. So there was this little glimmer, little glimmer in her heart of hope, right? Because it was in him, not I wish, but her hope was in person of the God that loved her and she was one of those people. So she decided in her heart, you know what, I'm just going back home and you know, you girls can you can just go back home. No, we'll go with you, we'll go with you. They go part way and I think they got to the point where it's like you either go forward or you're gonna go back home. There was some crossing point. And at that crossing point or in Orpah's like, yep, turned her head, went back home, we'll never hear about her again, right? Or Ruth is like, I don't care, your God is my God, your people my people, you know, your country my country. She was walking into a whole new culture just like Naomi had walked into her culture. She was walking into another whole culture and, you know, where you, where you live, I'm going to live, and where you die, I'm going to die, and, you know, that's it. And she was, isn't that a true friend? She was a true friend. Yeah. What happened when Naomi came back? And they go, I, I know they said they saw grief all over her, loss all over her, hopelessness all over her. And she was honest. She said, you know, don't call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me Mara, which means bitter. Yeah. And she's just like, that's just, but I'm home now, you know. You know, and that's how they came in. But Ruth, can you imagine? I, I'm amazed at Ruth. She was a true friend. And she knew God, and she didn't understand at all that there was something, some spot in her heart that goes, that's right. He's right. You know, there, I'm not giving up. You know, but can you imagine living with a bitter mother-in-law day after day? And, you know, that was her lifestyle. You know, why did this happen to me? What a loss. This time, that time. I remember when he was here, you know, this is where I met him. You know, he's gone. All day, every day, she was she was in a desperate place. But a friend brought hope back because they knew that God, the person that penetrates, you know, his opinions start penetrating her heart, right? And as you see, they said, call she they said, call me Mara. But did you notice no one ever called her? They didn't agree with God's future plan for her life. They understood she was going through a hard time at the time. But they did not agree. They didn't say, okay, we'll call you bitter. You know, no, we're calling you pleasant. You're pleasant. God has a, you know, there's something going to happen here. Well, and so that's a wonderful story about the harvest. It's on every page of that book, like we sang about. The harvest, the harvest. Ruth uh, worked hard. She went to this Boaz field. And it's just amazing. The love story in that book is amazing. But the end of it is how his opinion truly penetrated Naomi's life, right? Yeah. Because here's Ruth. She marries Boaz. And this is just a side note. Pretty funny for you. <laughs> okay. You know, remember when Boaz made the agreement with the guy? And because one other person had first choice in getting that land and, right? And, oh yeah, I want the land, you know. But 
But then you need to include, oh no, I don't want her, right? <laughs> right? Because my, you know, um, inheritance and stuff will be tampered with if I have a form of it. So see, they got shook out. True generosity and greed got shook out. What a, I mean, Ruth could have ended up somewhere like that, right? <laughs> but I believe when that guy took off his, remember he took off his sandals to seal the deal? I believe when you walked into Ruth and, and Boaz's house, the first thing you saw on the wall was this nail that had a sandal hanging. That was the sign. That was the sign that this is our outward sign of what God did inwardly. And it's good, it is a side thing, it's good to have some things in our life that are an outward sign of what God does inwardly in our hearts that you can look at because that was a sandal of hope. Yes. Because his opinion penetrated that. And so, you know, Ruth has a baby. And here she's one of the four women that are listed in the genealogy of Jesus. She didn't know how God, the God of hope, was going to use her and her choice to follow him down the road, you know. And so she has a baby. But do you know, they call one of the last things in the book of Ruth, so all the people called that baby, Naomi's baby. They're, you know, Ruth and, I can hear Ruth, well, I did all the work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they, they lay that baby in her lap. And all the bitterness, the sadness, yes. the hopelessness, yes. the junk she went through, that, you know, would crumble most people, it didn't crumble because this was the only thing. And the whole place rejoiced. So when we get his opinion to penetrate everything, he shows us how to walk through it. You know it wasn't instant, right? Mm -hmm. it, it took time. Yeah. But they had, she had a friend. She expressed her feelings but didn't stay there. <laughs> Right? Everyone around kept calling her pleasant, 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 pleasant. And time, as time passed here, she had that baby. And she held that baby in her lap. And you know she was the grandma of all things. You know? And so that's, um, so that's my story. And, and it can do it.